Okay, we're starting. Okay. Being professional. Yes, so sorry for the <laughs> delay, everyone. Um, we're going to record this, and if it's super laggy on the live session, I'm going to end up uploading it also so that you guys don't miss any of the conversations that we're going to be sharing today. <laughs> uh, Trish, you said her daughters have the same unicorn. <laughs> you know, we're all kids at heart, eh, Trish? <laughs> Okay, so welcome back to the vlog. Welcome to our room of requirements. And uh, today we decided to do a Pride session in, because it is uh, Pride Month and we wanted to share our experiences over the past 15 years that we've shared this, uh, this ex-secret of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> This is my ex-boyfriend, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and boy, Mark Nelson always starts with, ladies and gentlemen, cats and kittens and dogs and puppies, <laughs> he does his hosting, I'm like, what's that? So, welcome everybody, and yes, this is uh, just part of Anjan, um, my way of sharing some really mindful LGBTQ plus discussion with you all. Yes. Uh, being Pride Month, but generally, Angie and I celebrate Pride every day. Yes, of you course. I think everyone should celebrate Pride every day. So, we've been together on this journey for 15 years. So, I would think we're professionals. You think we're professionals, by <laughs> now? In the LGBTQ journey of experience. Yes. <laughs> Me as a supportive, supportive, supportive wife, <laughs> supportive wife, which is also considered an ally. Yes. Hi. And, and of course, being a proud trans woman. Okay. Do we start? Let, let's share. Let's share. I mean, um, I read some of the questions that you guys sent and I'm going to try to inject it in the story that we're going to share with you so that I don't have to cover everything. Um, a lot of the questions were asking, like, what was your first reaction when I told you? And a little backstory is that three months into dating, I came out with the statement of, like, I like women's underwear. And it started from that stepping stone. And what was the reaction from that? I thought, oh, that's so cool, because David Beckham wears his wife's underwear. So it wasn't as scary as I thought but I thought it was going to be the end of everything and um, it actually grew from there because it was uh, I guess playful in the beginning where we we were experimental in that stages of the relationship um, experimental meaning I am forcing her <laughs> to wear pieces that she's never worn before well I mean, I'm coming from the world of fashion and entertainment. So I really basically grew up with a lot of um, many, well, a lot of, a lot of expressive individuals, but it was different being married uh, to <laughs> an expressive individual, right? Because you can be friends and you have friends who are gay, you have friends who are bi, and then nowadays pan, and nowadays there's just so many different yes. situations and terms that I... Them, they, I, there. I, I, I'm like, cool, be you. <laughs> um, but it's different because it, it's, it's not really in your life, and it's completely different when it's in your life, when it's an actual you know, family member, you're married, or in a relationship. So it definitely was... Uh, Hello, Leia, our dog, who's just interrupted our session. So, uh, yes, I was already exposed to it. So when Ange expressed it to me, it was not that... Shocking. No, it wasn't. I was just really glad that the underwear that I saw in the, in the basket was, was hers. So if it was some other chick, that's, that's a different story. Like when you're dating someone for three months, you're thinking, oh, my God. So when she told me that it was hers, I'm like, oh, that's, that's great. So maybe some people may have the uh, idea that I was shocked when, nope, not really. Not so shocked. Yeah. So um, for, for me, it was a load off my chest because it was, I was able to express my desire for feminine things. And it grew from there where 
I started from underwear and Joey's like, have you tried this? Have you tried that? So we got experimental and it, it really blossomed from there because it, I guess, yeah, the floodgates were opened and I was able to access everything that I so desired. Mm. <laughs> I'm laughing at Trisha's comment. What is Trisha's comment? Your dog sounds like a giant pig. <laughs> Uh, our, our dog Leia just got loose, so she's a little happy to see us. Um, she, hopefully, she doesn't bother us for the rest of the live session. <laughs> Kobe's on, hey Kobe? She goes, love the dog sound effect. <laughs> We're talking about serious LGBTQ discussions here, ladies, and you're all concerned about dog effects because <laughs> they're animal lovers. Yes. So that's that's kind of like how the beginning was for us. Like the real journey was when Ange wanted to transition. This is when things got really, that was when things totally shifted. The game changed. This was about 2012, 2011, 2012, 2013, somewhere there. Uh -huh. Where um, I think that the trigger point for me was being in Germany, seeing my dad get really ill and almost lose his life and made me realize like how fragile life was and how short life could be and that I felt like I was depriving myself from truly becoming a whole human being. So that was my trigger point. And I, I think I remember the hotel we were staying near the, the church, the old church in, was it Cologne? We were in Cologne. We, and, and what's it at all? We, no, we, we went to the, that landmark, but I forget what hotel we stayed in. And then I was telling Joey, like, um, I want to live like this more every day because our situation in the beginning, we would travel to different countries so that I can express myself and dress and no one would recognize us and we could be anonymous to everyone else. So our favorite spots that we would go to is obviously Los Angeles. We did Pride in Los Angeles once or twice. I believe it was just once. Once, but we were once always together. We always tried to hit the other prides, but we always missed yeah. the dates. We did one Pride in Miami, which is what you saw Joey post on her Instagram, and then the rest of it was just um, traveling to other countries. So I've uh, dressed up in, I guess, Hong Kong. Um, Japan, Singapore, Singapore, and then uh, parts of Europe and Europe and then America, New York. Yeah, New York. LA. So that was the experience. But when we were in Germany, I was telling Joe, like, I, I want to have this every day. I don't want to have to shift back to the other person. And it's, it's like when I pack the suitcase up, all all the enjoyment goes away all the i guess the peace and wholeness goes away into that suitcase and it's ready for the next trip but every trip it's always i need more more days more more experiences more time more interaction and um i wouldn't say it was yeah it wasn't super easy breezy after i shared that with joe because that's when we were sort of having our rough spots in terms of our relationship. And how many years do you think we went through some like rough moments? It was a lot. We had in because what you may not, well, what you do not know. So you would be Angie when we travel. Yes. Philippines, it would be back to Ian. Uh, and so I'm looking at Angie as in like it's part of our travel, it's part of our, it's a fun thing to do. Uh, uh, then it started to become detrimental to Angie's, you know, mental health because as she's taking off her makeup and taking off the clothes, it's, she's becoming so connected to, you know, to Angie. And then going back to Ian was a very sad, it's, it's just, it just wasn't, wasn't who she you know, is or represented. Yes. And then for me, because I didn't really see Ange so much, I hadn't connected to Ange as being an integral part of the relationship. It's still Ange was a, was, had become a friend. Uh, and Ian was the husband relationship. But this is when I hadn't had therapy. <laughs> so I was unable to work stuff out. Because I would compartmentalize, 
I would box, I would give everything a title, I'd give everything a role. And all of that is just out of the, out. It's not even existent in our life now. But then I had to have a role. So wait, Ian is this role, I am this role, and Angie's here. And that was my <laughs> dilemma. Because I, that was, that was the coping mechanism. That's the way that a majority of us human beings have been you know, brainwashed, programmed. programmed. Yeah. So I realized that I'm actually hitting an area that I've never, you know, questioned before. Like Angie and Ian are one. Yes. And then so it's just really starting a relationship with Angie, which is technically the same person. It's just I hadn't connected it and I haven't, I, did just, I just didn't break the barrier in my head. I was actually closed. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like they can be so supportive of someone, but you're still closed. Yes. And if it happens to you, it's a different support that you need to be. Yeah. Because when I transitioned, Joey had to transition. Yeah. All my friends and family around me had to transition. It could go as basic as pronouns, but it would also go deeper into... Uh, I guess the behaviorism of everyone, especially like my friends are all guys and uh, adrenaline and testosterone is very strong in the barcada. So it was a very hard shift for my best friends. It actually took my best friends four years, if I'm not mistaken. Now it's all sis, hey sis this, hey sis that. It was four <laughs> years for them to even come to the grasp of that I wanted to come out because when I told them that I wanted to come out their disbelief, denial and just just overall like they just wanted to drink all the time because they didn't want to face the the reality that I was facing. Yeah. And that is kind of a typical human response of denial because um humans aren't able to deal with change yes. fast. Um but I must admire the younger generation, because the younger generation is completely, they, they, these guys are such a different vibe. You tell them one thing and they're like, oh, that, I'm down, I'm cool with that. But then there's an older generation which just really, they're, they have really a lot of difficulty with his, her, struggle, Ange, name, ma'am, um, sir. <laughs> it's just, mm, all right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have to be kind of, you know, just really have space that not everyone will be able to shift dialogue or just completely understand right away and that's okay that's not your problem um what was i going to add in there the um with acceptance of friends uh, uh, oh sometimes when we do go and you know when we go out there'll be like a, a big testosterone group and <laughs> i would be affected by um, when peeps would say, you know, oh, pare this, pare that, uh, pare this. I'm triggered watching this. First of all, I'm looking and thinking, okay, they accept you, but do they accept you? But the, do I, d is it a responsibility to kindly tell them, maybe you want to shift how you speak to her? So the, it, it was also new for me to, to experience this. Um, you want to answer some questions? Yes, we're halfway yeah. into the session. We better go and answer some questions. I actually saw a really good question. Okay, let me scroll. On your IG. Um, the person asked when I was uh, going to tell you, was I, ex was, was I anticipating how you were going to react or how you were going to feel? Honestly, when I was telling Joe that I liked women's underwear, I actually thought that the... Uh, this is it. She's going to break up with me and leave me because I'm a freak. So that was the initial reaction for myself. And I think I can share that most most people who are in my boat or in my line of like transgender confusion would have that same feeling of like, you're so scared to share your deepest thoughts that sometimes, you know, the person doesn't react as bad as you think so it was pretty good that reminds me of a situation we were in san francisco airport and hadn't used a female bathroom yet scary she was so scared scary. there's a, actually a long line of women 
And she's like, I, I don't want to go. I go, you have to pee. I'll be there with you. And we were standing in line. I'm just looking at her. Of course, I can't take photos because it's so weird. Like, you're in a line to the women's bathroom. But it was such a monumental moment for monumental her. Monumental moment. <laughs> that she stand, she's in a lady's bathroom. And no one's giving her any grief. Because everyone just wants to pee. Right? Because she was so scared that they're going to get on her. She's fine. The only time she got grief was here in the Philippines. In the car but, show, but bathroom. in other countries, she's been okay. Just want to say, like, much love to Kobe, who's been there with us. Kobe was from there from the beginning to now. Kobe, Parcel, who's in Australia. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's do questions. your questions first. Or? Well, my questions. Okay. Uh, I have a ton of questions. You want to do like what? your views on the use of pronouns? I mean, that's pretty easy. You gonna elaborate? Or? The use of pronouns? I mean, um, so normally in today's age, it's actually very polite for you to ask the person if you are confused on your interpretation of their gender to ask them politely, excuse me, what pronouns do you prefer? Because some people actually prefer them, they, there, which means they're neither he or she. So it's interesting because I thought it was complicated already, but when I heard that, I was like, oh, there's another category that we need to respect because some people don't see themselves as female or male and they see themselves as the in-between group. Okay. Uh... One of my questions, a lot of them are, are questions about us, like our marriage, and but I did want to have some more LGBTQ discussions of being how to be an active ally. Yes. So not, you know, um, saying that you're a supporter is one thing, but what we need in these times is actually having active allies where you voice out your support, your you're not just sitting on the sideline and accepting people to be who they are, but, you know, being there for them, um, maybe um, telling other people or informing other people if uh, they make side comments and side jokes that, you know, it's it's already the 2021, so we shouldn't be doing that anymore because people are allowed to be diversified and expressive of who they are. Uh, I hosted a um, really fun show for P&G last week, and that's where I got the saying active ally, and I thought that was really very cool. But how they also um, encourage the, those who, who work to, to not um, support others that make jokes uh, of anyone of their gender. I mean, it's not just LGBTQ plus represent, it's male, it's cis male, cis female, that's yes. cis, if you're born of, of this gender and you are being that gender, uh, living as that gender, uh, to just, instead of teasing someone like, oh, you're, you must be, um, you know, you're crying because you're such a girl or you're such a gay, um, or they, that job is so bad because they're gay. And, and that yeah. type of mentality um, or like, you're not allowed to cry. Or that saying, you drive like a girl. Or you, you throw like a girl. I mean, like, oh What my does that God. mean? <laughs> like, that's like real old Tito Tita stuff. Okay? I mean, like, who talks like that? Check. I mean, the way to be an active ally is to check in. Like, if you are joining the camaraderie with this joke, maybe check in, because that doesn't feel really good, like, to to put anyone down and it's disrespectful it's it, it's it's situations like that where you become active because you are now putting a stand like that's not funny and i don't support that humor yes and that's when you wow boom kudos to you because you put a stop to to that i mean it's always good to have like one little small you know um a uh, lesson for for each person in your community to learn from each other. And that's another way of being active. How, what's other ways to be an active ally? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it would be to support someone 
who you know already and that that in itself is a huge help because normally when you're questioning your gender you don't really um, know who you can talk to who you can trust sometimes uh, your own family will turn on you and then sometimes your own family is the one who is going to support you like my case in point I thought my brother would beat the shit out of me and and it did happen and he was actually supportive in a way so it wasn't as bad as I thought and that was that was a interesting reaction. It's because the history she had with her brother growing up, he everything was a fag. Oh, that's a fag. That's a fag thing to do. He's a fag, isn't he a fag? So it really kind of burned in her, like, wow, how is he gonna react? Because oh, all even, these years he's just been so. Diva, even what my dad said also. So when people would ask, um, like, how are your kids and and uh, like, um, what or what's the what's the success of raising a child? And he would always say, as long as they're not a killer and they're not gay. So it's very like, whoa, pressure. I feel the pressure. Yeah. But you also understand that is from you know, his, his upbringing. His upbringing. programming. Yeah, his, upbringing, his programming. Yes. Everyone's got this coding and programming. And once you realize that in this matrix and you break that, you will be enlightened. <laughs> okay, so I've got this question which is interesting here. Okay. Uh, Travels DMX says, uh, Joey, aren't you open to the idea that Angie might fall for a guy? Now, I'm wondering, I posed that question to you. Why would you want to ask that? It, because it, I think it's because people have this idea that because Angie's a trans woman, she will want a male. Do you understand what I'm saying? What makes you think because she's a woman, she will want a male? What if she wants another woman? Right? If she did, I'll bitch slap that. <laughs> hey, language. You said the S word, so I thought I could say. Okay. But I'm just joking aside. Okay. I'm just trying to, you know, um, turn, expand your turn, question. Yes. Like expand and like, because for others to know that just because she's a trans woman, there's this automatic stereotypical way of thinking, Oh, she's going to like men. Because that's what the majority of trans women, uh, you know, will wish. We always see it. A trans woman, she always wishes to be married and to have... Swept away. Do you swept away and, and to have, like, the fairy tale, you know, coding. Yes. Um, and then there, there are many individuals who are also expressive as Ange who uh, have preference since for a female. Yes, we actually have friends in the States who are still married and with their wife and very happy yeah um let's go through my questions yeah okay joey i just want to ask you both um how you met halfway and decided to keep your relationship and how do you keep the love for each other regardless of your differences how do we keep our love for each other regardless of the differences because you're a speed freak and it's i'm like how, introverted how we how we met halfway in the relationship <laughs> Uh, well, you know what, let me, um, when we were struggling and we were going through our very, very difficult moments, um, I had a saying that I shared with Joe, like, transition isn't an instant thing, and every day you're going to see me change slowly, so let's take things day by day, let's take things as we wake up, and you see me, you still like me, then we'll stay together, and let's not worry too much forward and just as we wake up and take things day by day then that sets the tone in terms of like you see the slow development so you have a chance to say i don't want this anymore and i was lucky she stayed i uh, still here 15 years later <laughs> um do you both have any insecurities about each other hobbies talents beauty etc uh, I do. I do. Yes. I don't need to share them, but I have very, you know, I have, I catch insecurities and I just check in myself and I ask myself, like, where does it come from? I mean, I do different types of mental health therapy for myself. So it's not something that, oh, I have a problem and it's your fault. I really delve into where is this coming from? Where's the trigger? Did I get it from my mother or my non, you know, present father? Yes. It usually has nothing to do with Ange. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
Angie, what was the moment when Joey finally decided to be with you regardless of? What what makes to stay with you regardless of? Well, I don't know. That huh? doesn't make sense. But, um, I mean, Joey decided to stay with me in the beginning because... <laughs> the question doesn't make sense. We're going to skip that question. How do you measure beauty? You don't measure beauty. Everyone has their own beauty that they can work with. And... Wait, wait, I want to go back to that question. Oh. Because we do get that a lot. Like, how do you guys stay together? Or why did Joey decide to stay? You know what? Can you just look at her? And for those who follow her vlog or, like, have this, like, idea of, you know, that she's, like, the most amazing individual in the world. I mean, it's just, hello. Uh, why would I not want to stay with an individual that is uh, encourages freedom, uh, who loves me unconditionally. And when you say unconditionally, it's not like, oh, anything you do will be acceptable. Unconditionally means you want someone to accept you for all of the flaws, all of the bad things, and love you regardless for that. Now, when you find an individual uh, who is ex as accepting as that, you hang on to them. People might think it's because of Ange and I accepted her, but it's actually the other way around of her accepting me. Um, <laughs> Answered that question. <laughs> how Joey stayed with you and never fading love for her. It's not a question. Do you experience any sexism and discrimination? If so, how do you handle it? Oh, um, I've actually only had a few discrimination events in my life and one was in the car show bathroom where the car show models basically said, you shouldn't be here. And I said, I just wanted to wash my hands. So one of the girls actually defended me there where she was like, let her wash her hands now. Uh, that was one. Singapore airport, when we landed, the immigration officer, very oh, old he guy. Was, he was really grumpy. It was Joey's birthday and he was so grossed out with me. He was... And he was like, who are you here with? Why are you here? I go, I'm celebrating my wife's birthday. Where's your wife? And it's like, I'm there in immigration. And she came forward and he, he was in so disbelief, like, you're married to this. So that was discrimination. And then when we flew, we were flying to Europe and we had to stop in Qatar or Doha. Doha. It's, it was one, I think it was one of, one of the... It was one of, uh, one of our brothers and sisters' country. And... Yep, the airport security literally looked me up and down and looked me up and down twice, went through my passport, asked me so many questions, and that was another discrimination moment. I had one more discrimination moment when I was uh, on the way to the racetrack and I had to stop by one of the gas stations on the highway and the cleaning lady inside did the same thing, like, you shouldn't be here, the, you should be in the other bathroom, so, yes, we do experience it. I do experience it. And there's nothing I can do but be mindful that as long as this person doesn't physically harm me, then there's no threat. But if it comes down to any physical interaction, then that's when I'm going to be wary. So um, I hope that answers that question. Uh, are you both vegans? No. Do you sell your crops? Yes. Uh, love you both for each other measurably. Um, okay. What's your motivation in anything you do? And do you have days where you want to be a lazy potato? Yes, there are days I absolutely do not want to do anything. But in general, I always want to have things happening. I always want to have multiple projects. I always want to have uh, different... different uh, things materializing but the problem with the pandemic it's actually sort of scaled down everything for us and forced us to relook into ourselves and sort of like simplify the way we live now so uh, yes I want to stay busy but yes I also want to be lazy <laughs> are you planning to have children Joey we have so many children. Do you know how many children we have? Like Fur babies. We have... Four horses. Four horses. Seven cows. F 13 cats. Four, five dogs. We have 
a gaggle of geese and ducks and there's two turkeys. We got a lot of we we have a lot of lives to look out for right now. And I, we're full. I do have a son and he's 24 years old already. He's in Vancouver. Hi Nigo, if you ever watch my vlogs, hello. Um, but uh, no one, not a lot of people know that I actually have a son already. But between Joey and I, no, we do not have children and we're not planning to have any physical children. Um, how do you manage your time as a couple, even if you stay too busy? Recently, I haven't been really busy. It's only that I'm closing the car shop, but for the past year, we've actually been together most of the year. So, right? The actually, longest year away was just to close the car shop. Yes. Um, okay, the staying away from the city affected. Uh, and then, because they assume that you're a city girl, and she's hoping to hear how you cope with moving to the farm. Well, it's just elements that I had not been used to because we would come here for the long weekend or like the longest would be like five days. But now moving to the farm and making it an actual farm and our home, uh, it's just elements of the weather. We have intense mold here. The moisture is high, so I'm affected. I'm actually allergic to mold. Yes. So that was kind of, that's something to manage. And then now recently I'm allergic to grass cutting and the hay, hay of the, the horses. horses. So we we're out in nature, but like I'm checking if I have allergic asthma with, with, every, with my surroundings. It's kind of uh, surreal. Um, and it's just the farm or nature elements. I've learned to not swat anything like with anger because it could be a wasp spiders snakes there's always something wasps. on you wasps and we have about leeches. four i got leech bit i felt like that was my what i call it like my initiation initiation Welcome that i am to book it live. farm girl but a, a leech was sucking on me uh and just bugs lives and uh animals and and then just, or just even when we're walking around the field, like you have to be careful what you're walking into. That's why I always wear a hat because I, you're always walking into spider webs. And some of the spiders, they ain't like cute little guys, okay? No, they're like they're just... freaking huge, okay? I just, just don't want to be bitten because it's usually every week, Ange gets bitten more. I'll yeah. always have a bite, an ant bite or it's, <gasps> Like mosquitoes are real sharp here. It's just because we we are coexisting you know, with nature. You know, every time you go close to the mic, it burst it out. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's me because I'm going towards my camera. I know. I'm, I, uh, I hope I hope the audio isn't blown out, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Your YouTube people are like, oh yeah, my God. sorry. This first YouTube live. So anyway, I I get this question a lot. How do you keep the love burning? <laughs> burn it, baby. Burn it. Well. I mean, we communicate, which is important. We, we not, mostly it's me. It's me saying that I don't have <laughs> special time with you, honey. It's always me that's complaining. I'm the one always saying, we need to go do this, we need to go do that. Uh, but we enjoy each other's company. When, it, when we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we're so appreciative that we are experiencing that moment together. I need to prepare breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She cooks for me. I do desserts too. I am so spoiled. Being in the farm, we actually make our own chocolates. We make our own breads. We make our own desserts. What do you mean we? I, I, I do make shit. all of that, and she <laughs> eats everything. And that's the way to keep I it burning. I support because I'm an active spouse <laughs> uh but yeah farm life it's just that where um it's like wow just just you're really living out in the elements here's a good question from uh one of my followers and it's a uh, what is the lgbt situation of the philippines um so as you guys know we are in, I guess, in the uh, review of the Sochi Bill. The Sochi Bill is the Sexual Orientation Gender Identity uh, Act where we're trying to give recognition to people who don't fall into the normal categories by giving them protection 
and just equal rights, not special rights, equal rights. Um, sadly, because the Philippines is uh, being dominated by matriarchs, it's it's or patriarchs. It's very hard for um, this to pass because most of the people who pass the laws are still all very older gentlemen who are very very closed in their beliefs. So it's very difficult. Um, I'm trying to be nice and not political. And hopefully if anyone is watching who is in Senate or in Congress who can help ratify the SOGI bill, please, please, we do need it. Um, okay. Do you have plans to adopt? No, no plans to adopt. Discoveries during the pandemic situation, honey. What is your discoveries during the pandemic situation? Discoveries of... During the pandemic situation, lessons and discoveries you gained as a couple during the current pandemic. That we work really well together. That we can spend every day with each other and, and not want to kill each other. Yes. Um, other other things we realized that you know moving to the farm that we didn't need the Gucci bag or we don't need the LV purse or um, most of the clothing that I wear in the farm is all tactical, practical, tactical which is very functional. I mean, she's, she dressed up today. I dressed up to her today to <laughs> she make like, it look good. She's like, you're wearing that. I, I know. Go, I'm like, yeah, I'm just feeling comfortable. I'm just going to wear my Def Leppard t-shirt. You know, pro. I'm just going to have a comfortable conversation Purple, with everyone. Uh, and then I'm like, look at you. You're like looking all chic, you know. But, you know, it's it. all. What I learned is that there's so much we don't need. There's such an abundance of extra stuff we don't need the most important thing is your mental well-being you being present um and your quality of living is the most important thing here's an under interesting question um we get this a lot how do you deal with negativity and bashers and trolls so you should start first because you get reactions when these things happen I haven't, well, I haven't had it for a long time. I mean, there's been nothing on my channel to, <laughs> to get mad about or judge. I mean, I know there's lots of judgments, but they're just not saying anything on my IG. But I don't care. There was a time when I cared because I wasn't really able to tap into myself and then, you know, work. Why am I being affected and, and, and reactive to it? I was very defensive, especially when it came to Ange. I felt like I had to explain and defend and be right but now it's just all about reserving and keeping my energy uh, for far more important uh, matters instead of you know <coughs> replying to a hater I <coughs> haven't had anything I mean the most times I really had bad stuff was when we had Asia's Next Top Model and they were really passionate <laughs> they're like whoa okay oh, hey right like relax guys <laughs> i i on the other hand um when i do get uh bashers and haters i actually one don't reply to if they're really rude block them but there are moments where i actually reply and try to investigate further and be nice to this person maybe they just want to be heard maybe Maybe they they are just questioning, and there's moments where I have the patience to actually entertain a troll or a hater just to see, like, you know, what's up before I block them. But we don't need that negativity if you don't like the content that we produce, then don't watch it. I mean, at the end of the day, for anyone in the LGBTQIA space, you don't have to like us, you don't have to love us, but don't kill us so that's like the basic basic gist do you ever have lovers quarrels misunderstandings yes because we're we're married we're together we're human we're individual we have moods <laughs> so of course we do <laughs> yes very normal especially there's, me there's moments where Joey gets fussy about renovation or a new car or... I haven't been fussy about a new car. I mean, 
<laughs> Lately, it's just been renovation, just noise and dust and extra people. Extra, extra. Uh, how do you deal with stress? Nothing. Uh, I go kiteboarding now. So I do physical activities, try to get some sleep, um, try to quiet my mind before going to bed. Usually an hour before bed, I will get off my phone. And, uh, and yeah, try to exercise. That's what helps me keep my stress in check. Do you still have boxes in your bucket list that you haven't checked? Yes, I have a ton of things in my bucket list that I haven't checked. Yes? Yes. Yes. Um, your biggest fear right now, if any? I mean, cash and COVID. What's the biggest fear that you have? Not, l not living each moment of my life. Here's a political question. What is your view on same-sex marriage? Obviously, we're for it. Um, I think for anything else, if, if not allowed in the church, at least legal, uh, legal rights given to the partners or the spouses of these uh, non-conventional relationships. Because if, let's say, we're same-sex marriage, uh, I mean, we're same-sex couple, and let's say your same-sex uh, partner got into the hospital and he got really ill or she got really ill, you have no say because you're legally not the uh, recognized uh, caretaker or um, I guess second in command in, in that sense. So yes, I do believe that um, we do need that acknowledgement mm -hmm. because it is important, especially when, when moments like this where it comes down to being the recognized um, spouse or partner so definitely i hope that passes one day maybe not in our lifetime but hopefully one day uh what are your common interests we don't have many common interests what are common interests honey what are your thoughts about depression and anxiety in the community it's real in the beginning, when I was coming out, um, yeah, it was, it, I had a point where I thought like I wouldn't find anyone else and I would have to be alone for the rest of my life until I met Joe. So it's very real because when you feel isolated and you feel like you have no one to turn to, no one to talk to, no one to express to, then it gets very depressing. Um, everything feels, yeah, feels like it's caving in on you. So that's very difficult. Okay, I'm going to the last page. From Sin. Um, reasons why you decided to stay and fight in your relationship with Angie. Well, I answered that. Yeah, we covered that a while ago. Um, Carla Mainra, who's more emotional? <laughs> what are your opinions in asking someone's sexuality? I shared that a while ago. It's not offensive as long as you're very polite. And you can just say, um, excuse me, how do you want to be referred to? Because that will set the tone that you are very uh, mindful of the situation. Oh, here. What is your view about trans women joining pageants? I think it's fantastic. They should be able to join pageants. You think it's fair that the uh, cis woman and a <coughs> trans woman would be in a pageant <coughs> together? <coughs> fair. I think it. I don't see any problem with it. They, if they, if a trans woman she represents as a, if she's woman expressive. It is a pageant. So the pageant uh, criteria is. <coughs> is uh, passionate and a, a worldly intelligent female <clears throat> and then they usually have like a talent portion and it's a it's a gown and swimsuit and i mean it, it, she can why not I, I don't see any dilemma with that though you had a dilemma with you have a difference with when it comes to sports though yes um 
I, this might be controversial, but honestly, I don't think trans women should join women's sports. So it's a little tricky because I, I understand that even though I'm on hormones, even though my testosterone is below the male average and that I have high estrogen, I still grew up with the physicality of having high testosterone, which means bigger bones, faster firing muscles and neurons. So those things are, I guess, a bit controversial on my end. But yes, I, I don't think uh, trans women should compete with uh, cis women in competitive sports. So hope I don't get a bunch of hate for that. Um, a lot of more questions here about having kids. Why do you guys want kids? Because it's Why also it? another very stereotypical fairy tale, and it's a feel good for them. For for those that the fairy tale is that a couple who is together should that, have children, and the children is a blessing. And hence, like you know, where everyone's obsessed with like the royal family, or people like to see families it's a feel good so they it's kind of like their wish or curiosity and then which i understand but what i also don't really get is shaming mostly the women who don't want to have children yeah. that's what i don't understand like i, I think uh, kim said something about this uh, jericho's wife um how she was getting a lot of uh influx of like you should have kids and stuff and and I'm just saying that there's just so much more in a relationship or or what a woman, uh, cis woman, cis male, what a person can do. Yes. <laughs> Instead of just getting married, having children. And there's just so much more than, than just that. Um, here's an interesting question. What was the decision to leave the city life? And do you ever want to go back to the city someday? Nope. No and no. The decision was the pandemic hit and we needed to simplify our lives. So we ended up getting rid of the city house, moving to the farm, shutting down businesses and sort of consolidating everything in this location. After living here for more than a year already or just about a year, we decided that no, we don't ever want to go back to the city because it feels so cramped, polluted. And it's, it's just not a great space to be in if you want to be a balanced person. So we love the province life and we're not looking back. Hi, Grace. Are you typing from South Africa? Grace Bolin is on there. She said she agrees with you about sports and also that beauty pageants is, is cool. You know, honestly, with the beauty pageants, it's like, unless there was a pageant that was... Uh, you weren't allowed to retouch or redo anything on your body, then I think that would be <laughs> that would be a fair pageant. That would be kind of cool. You have to join this pageant, but it'd be nice if you hadn't had anything done to yourself physically. This is your, <laughs> this your is really birth who you original are. <laughs> self. Because honestly... What would you call that pageant? I don't know. Like, the... the Miss Real Me. Miss Real Me, yeah, miss, exactly. That's, miss or Mr. Real Me. That's a great this pageant. This is how I came out. This is how I expressed. This is me. Yeah, this without, is me. Yeah, without retoque and without alterations. And, mm. you know, it, it's very unfair because most of the pageants require certain things, right? They do. It's a, it's a whole business. I mean, like basic, like I had my teeth fixed. That's why they look so flat and clean. And it... Yeah, I mean, just teeth or getting something shaved or getting your cheeks pulled in. Or it's what our conversation was yesterday was just moving away from the industry that I'd been in for 35 years, which is fashion and entertainment and how I really have dramatically shifted in how I see and live my life and how there's... So many jobs that I actually decline because I, I don't want to wear that piece or I don't believe in that brand. Um, there's so much identity associated with it. And this is what I read to you um, from Eckhart's book uh, about identity. And that's what's happened with 
society where you'll have to identify with what looks good and that's who you are. Um, and it said if the more people disidentify, brands would lose money because everyone would just be enlightened. I'm going to read this to you. Before my live ends, it's probably going to end. Okay, while Joey's looking for the thing to read, I wanted to share this question from Sin. Um, what if someone unintentionally calls me sir? And do I get offended? Honestly, no more. In the beginning, I used to get very offended and want to correct people in terms of like, no, you shouldn't use sir, you should use ma'am. But now, I don't really care because I know who I am and I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with, in terms of my coming out. So if you refuse to recognize my coming out, then that's your problem. I can't force anyone to use proper pronouns. It's out of respect that you will use proper pronouns. So I hope that answers that question. So this is what I read yesterday. Uh, those who know Eckhart. So this is his power of now. <clears throat> so I read this part, which is, which I totally relate to. The whole advertising industry and consumer society would collapse if people became enlightened and no longer sought to find their identity through things. The more you seek happiness in this way, the more it will elude you. Nothing out there will ever satisfy you except temporarily and superficially, but you may need to experience many disillusionments before you realize that truth. <laughs> wow, I have questions Okay, so doesn't my live just turn off? <laughs> It's, when it hits an the, hour? This is the longest live I've ever done. Um, so. Okay, I think I'm, I'm going to shut down the questions page and go through the live chat. Um, hello, everyone. Again, thank you for tuning in. Sorry the internet connection's been so spotty, but we will be uploading this footage to you guys. Nagbi uh, beach ba kayo? Yes. Obviously, because of my color, I've been actively kiteboarding, and I'm so dark now. I love it. I'll wrap up my, my IG live. Okay. So, everyone who's joined, thank you so much. Uh, we hardly do lives, and especially something this long, but we felt like it, was, uh, it would be fun to share bits and pieces uh, with, with you all on our lives, how, how it works for us, maybe answered some queries you had. I think I feel better also being able to explain certain uh, assumptions yes. of of what you know you may think of our relationship. But uh, so I'm happy to have done this too. <laughs> and uh, most importantly, when it comes to pride, it's really it should be celebrated every day. It is it is when you are so in tune and so happy with yourself uh, is pride and I think a lot of people uh, need to tune in to their authentic selves it doesn't have to be when you have an LGBTQ plus uh, journey like we have had like even myself I have uh, completely I guess uh, transcended in my own womanhood uh, thanks to Angie's journey and it could be for anyone to experience. But uh, wishing you all lots and lots of love and light. And thank you for sharing some space and time with the Kings. Thank you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Thank We're you. We're just shutting down Joey's IG Live. And I'm going to go through some more questions that's being put on the live chat of the YouTube stream. Um, here's an interesting question. We don't have common interests, yet you complement each other so well. How do you guys make it work? Hui. We don't have common interests now, but we make it work so well. Oh, well, I love you. And whatever you do that I may not completely understand, I still support you. And then in the stuff that you don't understand with me, you listen to me, but you still support me. It kind of revolves around that where... You were respectful of what each other does. Um, uh, and it's not really meeting halfway. It's just really hearing each other. Angie and Jerry, are you planning on writing a memoir? I have a book that's been under two years in the making. <laughs> and hopefully it will be released 
by August. Um, okay, what are the other... Whoa, it's just streaming up. <clears throat> what movies have you watched together recently? Well, we just watch anything that's on Netflix, guys. There's no reason for us to go out and watch movies because right now we actually sleep super early because we have morning chores with the horses so we don't have much late night evenings anymore like uh, it it's party night if we go to bed at 10 30 like wow we're such party animals what is it about my weight everyone i've been getting comments about my weight saying that i'm too thin i don't understand I like my weight where I'm at now and I've been super active, I've been super stressed and uh, it's, been, it's been difficult. Dealing with the pandemic, with the closure of multiple businesses has put a toll on my psyche and my health because uh, yeah, it's, it's basically made my life upside down, changed the way I operate, changed the way I see things. Um, when people used to call me for decisions that they needed now that's all gone so it's been yeah it's been a challenge since last year to realign myself and refine my purpose and refine what am i good for and what am i gonna do moving forward and yes the other question that uh, was asked here are we planning to make the farm a full-time thing yes we are planning i've been working so hard to make the farm flourish we've been doing multiple different projects here and hopefully one day all the projects will get finished so I can share you guys everything that we're doing. Our main objective here at King Tower Farm is to show people and help inspire people to get into farming. It doesn't matter what kind of farming. You could do container farming, you could do uh, windowsill farming, you could do tower farming, you could do floating farm, you could do aquaponics. Just do any sort of farming which will help feed or at least uh, supplement your feeds um, that's it oh Kim's Kim Garcia hey. oh, Kim's on. hi Kim okay guys I think we're gonna end this session already and uh, thank you so much for tuning in again if the stream is super buffering I'm so sorry the internet decided to misbehave today but i will be uploading this uh one hour feature on youtube and yeah if you guys have any other questions later on we can we'll answer, not answer them we can answer them <laughs> in the not comments answer them. this is the only special one one of the main reasons why i did this youtube live was to share my story on the channel because we've been getting a lot of inquiries about doing events for other companies but the problem with that is it's a very close system or a close network of audience so this way we're able to do this and hopefully you guys can share it to your friends and family who are wanting to know more about uh, certain dynamics of a trans woman and a woman in a married relationship but this is the only special this is this is it this is it yeah because if they want to know more, I don't want them to know more. <laughs> this is it. What are the things you argue about the most, honey? <clears throat> this. This? <laughs> sure. I, I, have, I have a question for Privacy. The, the viewers. Why aren't you in my vlogs more? Because it's your vlog and it doesn't interest me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, we're going to end the vlog here. Thank you again for tuning into this live session. Hope you guys are having a happy Pride moment. Remember, don't just be a standby ally, be an active ally. Oh, sweet ending there, honey. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Happy Pride, everybody. Bye. Stop.